We are back and we are joined by my friend, the wonderful Francesca Fiorentini. Is that a DSA Hi. shirt? No, no. I mean, it It should be. It's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's tight. Yeah, exactly. I really Got the like roses. it. roses. It's red. Thank yeah. you so much. Good to be here. Happy Friday, I guess is what you say. Mm -hmm. you yeah, say that you feel, in the office? You feeling happy? No. No, not me neither. Super happy lately. <laughs> I am not feeling happy ever anymore uh, because of the whole genocide thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, life genocide balance really getting you down. Um, it is. But it's interesting to go on stage too and talk about it in audiences that you would think would otherwise be uh, more amenable. They get little little buttholes get real tight when you talk it's about funny. what's going on in Israel. Yeah, yeah we'll but, talk you know, about. We'll talk about that in a second, I think. I want to, yeah. well, we'll I, we can have a bit of a vent sesh on, on liberal Zionists. But Ooh. before we get into that, if you were thinking about seeing myself on Sunday, but also Francesca Fiorentini Saturday and Sunday in San Francisco next weekend, there are, I'm not going to say how many tickets are left, but Francesca just told me, very, very few. So if you're listening to this live, you might be the only people that will have the ability to get these tickets because it's about to sell out probably in the next half hour or something like that. Um, I mean, that being said, there will be tickets the night of. So you can always okay. come through and see. I think they release a handful the night of. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be so fun. And also, if you don't get tickets to Sunday, Saturday, me and Nato Green and two other um, awesome comics, Daya Lakshmina Ryan and Corinda Dobbins, we're all sort of in the political comedy milieu. Um, we're doing stand-up, so like actual written jokes, more guaranteed laughs, but not Emma Vigeland on stage. So I'll be on stage on on Sunday, but uh, I mean the stand-up you've got to you've got to see, you've got to see. Gotta if see. you're in the area, why not both? Why not both? Yes, come see all of my Israel material that crushes oh yeah so what's that like i mean uh, to talk a little <laughs> bit more about that uh, 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 the audiences don't seem to get down with with it not necessarily i've had mixed mixed bag granted i'm in los angeles and you know there's like it is generally a more liberal city but it's a mixed bag it depends like some people don't want to be reminded of anything that's going on um my take is very much like here's what's going on in israel and don't worry i can say that because I'm not famous, and so yeah. you can trust me, all right? <laughs> call it bravery, call it anonymity, but I cannot be canceled. And that always gets a good laugh because people are like, you are not famous. I have no idea who you are. Right. Um, Self-deprecation comes first, and then they don't have to, like, immediately think, oh, scary topic. No, yeah, and it's, you know, look, I'm, there's, it feels like um, a little ridiculous to not mention it, but of course, you got to find, as a comic, you got to find your way around it. It's got to hit every time. It's got to be funny. You don't right. want to just be like, now you're looking at a sad TikTok or whatever it is. So it's a job. That's the job of the comic. And, uh, you know, it's fun. So, yeah, come come see me. And Nato Green, who's an anti-Zionist Jew, um, who is very outspoken and, like, like kind, used to be sort of one of, used to be my mentor. Now I'm his mentor. But, um <laughs> He's the best, and so it'll be a really fun time. And then Sunday, pff, Emma, are you ready? Oh, I'm That's ready. It's gonna be good. Um, yeah, it'll be great. Yeah, I'm. I'm excited. I'm thinking about thinking how to weave in your Tim Pool appearance <laughs> throughout. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it'll be a drinking game. I don't know yet, but we'll see. Yeah, you know, I rented a car out there, realizing um, I'm going to figure out a way to to uh, to get a ride on on Sunday night. <laughs> a car, first of all, don't rent a car; those get broken into every single day in San oh, Francisco. Oh Jesus! Um, no, hashtag no neoliberal. I'm not like no pro cop here, but like if you leave like lint in view. Uh, it will get taken because it's like there might be gold in there, you know. Okay, okay, okay. I'll figure this out, but I've I, I've I had to figure out a way to get to my cousin who lives like forty five minutes away. So uh, that okay, is the we'll rental car. But um, we'll but anyway, that you know, that's just some more logistics talk uh, for the audience. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's talk Israel, shall we? 
Uh, I just had a question, Francesca, before we got. Is, please, um, Bradley, what's up? So your stand-up, is it mostly like Seinfeld where like the music comes in and you're just like, and what yeah. is the deal yeah. bong -a -dong, bong -bong -bong. with punishment? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the deal with genocide? <laughs> I mean, bank. I mean, where um, is it? That's observational. Where are they supposed to go? <laughs> yeah. And it and it's just, oh, it slaps. Yeah, it slaps. <laughs> Oh yeah, that guy. Um, uh, I, I think he actually was in Israel. He, he with, was with like Eve Barlow. He so was, that's what yeah, he's doing. I, just doing this, like yeah. and, find, and that, that, find that photo. <laughs> oh, well, let's find, find this photo. Yeah, I, that's the exact pose. And I saw what? him. I saw him freaking courtside at the Knicks game the other night, yeah. and I Ooh. just wanted to be like, these Zionist celebrities will fade. And not that he said, look. He's pro-Israel. I hate it, but he hasn't said you know Arabs are rapists like Amy Schumer or something like that. With that means, yeah, not out, out, not to us, not but to in, us. In, yeah, in company, in other Zionist company, I'm sure. Yeah, it is incredibly disheartening. It also sort of seems to correlate because I know a lot of comics, I know a lot of Jewish entertainers, folks, you know, artists who are speaking out. But it's almost like the more money and power you have, um, the more you think that Hamas can like build tunnels going up to the Hollywood Hills. Like the more you think that like, well, my mansion has a million entrances. Like that's truly the correlation between the folks I know who've in the last three months lost their goddamn minds over what's going on. And oh, okay, not not the genocide part, the October 7th part. Oh yeah. Um, even though a lot of it, uh, the myths they keep regurgitating have been disproven by their own journalists or Israel Israel's own journalists. But it's like, it's just wild how that works. It's like, you are literally the safest person I know. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. No one's coming for you. <clears throat> and that correlates to how much they throw down with Israel and how scared and how much scaremongering they do. There he is. There he is. Traveling there in the midst of what's supposedly this very scary time in Israeli society. I mean, October 7th, the fact that civilians were killed there is horrific. I mean, horrific. Horrific. But you know what that reminds me of? It reminds but but me it's of like, not unsafe in Israel right now. The, 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 this is not a war. It, Seinfeld's going over there to pose and be like, hell yeah, soldiers, do that genocide. I'm enjoying it. But then he's got like an automatic weapon. I don't know what. Don't come at me, gun nuts. But like, it's, you know, you talked about Uvalde. You opened the show with Uvalde. Like, this is the same thing as posing with cops in your, you know, um, knee-jerk support of them when you think they're under fire with like an AR-15 yep. after children have been murdered. It's the same thing as Elon Musk going to the border and posing with, you know, border patrol or whatnot. And you he would never see Israel. Seinfeld doing that. He exactly. Did, I mean, Elon oh, exactly. did that he did, in Israel. He did, yeah. Right. And so, but that never crosses liberal Zionist mind. Yeah. Like, huh, suddenly I'm thrown down with the right. Well, well, you know. Yeah, I think so. Here, I, I I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on this about liberal liberal Zionism. Um, liberals, specifically older liberals too, but younger ones, I really do think they see justice and they see progress as acceptance versus hatred. Right hmm. on one side, there's bigotry and hatred of groups for who they are and their religion, and their, uh, their their skin color, right? And on the other side, there is liberalism. There's like, you know, cosmopolitan cities where people can be themselves, and in Israel, gay people are allowed. I mean, don't, don't let everybody know that gay marriage is not legal there yet, but um, there's gay people, and there's uh, nightclubs, and, and, and it, it, this is a, an accepting society versus the anti-semitism the hate on the other side and then some liberals will also say well god both sides are bigoted and i i just don't want to engage in this right yeah but leftists engage with this topic with a fundamental understanding of colonialism and power and yeah. um there's just an older political tradition where their view of 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 what is good is so structured around the anti-racist struggle here in the United States, um, as opposed to, and 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 also anti-Semitism and like anti-bigotry efforts domestically, and they copy and paste this onto an international moment of 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 violence from colonizer to the oppressed, and it just it, the, the the power 
the power dynamics, it doesn't fit. This is square peg, round hole stuff. Younger Absolutely. leftists. But also remember that it's right. only in lip service that liberals actually care about anti-racist struggles here. As yeah. soon as, you know, a, a homeless is digging through their trash, they're calling the cops, you know? I mean, a lot of the shootings, police shootings we've seen in this country have been because... <laughs> wealthier white people are calling cops on some people they shouldn't just for doing just for living their damn lives that's how a lot of you know police shootings escalate so you know i feel like it this is a moment for liberalism and and liberals in general to say you know and, and to see that yeah they support every single liberation struggle so long as it happened a long time ago just yeah way back in the past and now we can comfortably talk about it but when the ongoing genocide when it happens in your face you're nowhere to be found because number one it's not safe like it's not okay to just talk about it and you don't want to feel weird and awkward among polite company you don't want to lose job opportunities uh etc 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 you don't want to be called anti-semitic even though you know that this is yeah. not about anti-semitism and jews are leading uh the struggle for a ceasefire but yeah, it is. It I I, I I I'm waiting, Emma. <laughs> I'm waiting for just a few little, you know who you are, texts from people who lost their mind at me, just going like, "Hey, remember how I lost my mind at you? <laughs> you were right." I don't know if that's ever gonna. It's happen. never gonna come. <laughs> I, I'm waiting for it too. Like it literally eats at me every single day. I've lost friends. I've damaged friendships because of just my advocacy for Palestinian rights, and it's it's. I, not to make it of course about ourselves but i don't know about you it's been one of the it's been like deeply sad to me yeah. because i i've it's changed my perception of so many people that i know yes. um where it, it i i always thought we were aligned mostly and then it just comes to this and you bump up against a a, a proud ignorance about history yeah. a um a a a r real an apologism just real apologism. apologism for the these criminal acts and sort of again regurgitating the words of biden of netanyahu i've had golda Meir quoted at me the quote will someday we'll forgive the arabs for killing us but we'll never forgive them for making us kill their that was quoted children to me too i mean what and and look by the way I golda Meir, biden cites his meeting with her as the basically like uh, emotional underpinning of his support for israel in yeah. 1976 yeah. or something like that yeah yeah golda Meir gave him like just like a mother hen hug that his actual mom never gave him and just sort of like i think she was a slight woman but for some reason i'm like just like in her bosom right you know like headed his head and he will never forget it ever and we're all no, Palestinians are the ones suffering because of it. But yeah, it, look, I do want to say that I think I'm not a Jew, obviously. I'm married to a Jew. He's got a new podcast called Bad Hasbara. It's great if you want to talk about anti-Zionism from a Jewish perspective. Um, but I think it is important for us to understand that like in the United States, there is very deep indoctrination in some American Jewish communities that for those of us who are not steeped in those communities seems like we don't have an insight into. So I understand, and forgive me, but there's a cult-like mentality. There is an indoctrination. There's propaganda that has to be unpacked. It is being unpacked by progressive Jewish groups right now and, and has been. But I, So I have some empathy for people who are trying, who have been in a cult. But how many more thousands, tens of thousands of, of Palestinians have to be murdered before you're like, yep, yep, I'm leaving it. I'm leaving this cult right now. And you don't need to be a Jewish person to be in that cult. You can be Biden. You can say that you are a proud Zionist and um, you can buy into Israel's colonial project as reparations for the Holocaust. Uh, and it doesn't really necessarily matter what the cost is because the the frankly the western white arrogance of it all is just j jarring um the idea that it's not germany it's not the us it and other european countries for turning jews away as the holocaust was beginning to ramp up sure. who need to pay f uh, face reparations um for their uh, crimes ranging from germany's heinous uh, 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 unimaginable crimes of the holocaust to what i just mentioned Western nations not doing enough to protect Jewish people. No, no, no. We are above reproach. I mean, we don't face we don't face consequences for our actions. Haiti 
slavery, there's a revolt uh, in Haiti and slavery is overturned. Uh, the slave owners need to be paid reparations yep. by Haiti because they lost so much capital when slavery was abolished there. That is yeah. the same kind of uh, mentality that undergirded the establishment of Israel as a Jewish state in the Middle East, which is that even though these are the crimes of Western white imperialist nations, it's not us that needs to bear the brunt, really. It's the it's other people. Let them deal with it. And then mm -hmm. for these just crazy freaks to be calling so many Arab people. I mean, Ron DeSantis at the beginning, recent, uh, right after October 7th, was saying all Palestinians are, are anti-Semitic. Um, yep. no, Outlawing it, uh, the Palestinian flag in Florida, I believe today, yeah. yesterday. The, uh, um, and, but, but, but that's widely shared. Like the anti-Semitism that resulted in the in, in the in the horrific unimaginable crimes of the holocaust is a western white construction and yet now less than a hundred years after the holocaust it's apparently the burden of arab people in the middle east that they need to bear that they yeah. need to lose their children over not not any kind of real understanding of what well, gave rise to this ideology in Germany and why we still have not done it. We have not rooted out there are Nazis in this country right now. Yes. Oh, my God. There are Nazis who and they are allied with Israel. Netanyahu was the very first president to call Donald Trump and congratulate him on winning the presidency. The day after Jewish headstones in Jewish graveyards were toppled in celebration by American Nazis of Trump's victory. Like, Come on, we understand that Israel makes Amer American Jews and Jews around the world in the diaspora less safe because yep. of its, its actions. And they, of course, capitalize on, you know, as Norman Finkelstein calls it, the Holocaust industrial complex. But um, I do think that um, like one of the other lines that has been chillingly sort of sp spat at me by Zionists is um, kind of what you're talking about. And, and this is why when you look at Israel-Palestine a little too hard, you start to get real anarchist about it because you're like, hey, maybe nation states suck. Maybe militarized borders are awful, right? Maybe nation states are always created from the subjugation of usually brown people um, mm -hmm. as this country was. But a lot of liberal Zionists are telling me, look, like America had its genocide why can't Israel have their exactly. genocide? Oh, are you denying that Israelis, that Jews can have their genocide? And you're like, what are we talking about right now? But it's seen as this like almost badge of civilization and of, of nationality when you successfully decimate and genocide an entire population to create your state, right? And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Except for the problem is your state was created in a time when we were all talking about how that was terrible and anti-colonial yes. movements around the world were throwing off the yoke of their colonial oppressors and including south africa um and it's so, a test it, of the authenticity of that progress yes and yeah, we're failing exactly. and, well 100 percent. and it's just wild because you're like hey just forget about it let us do our genocide and you know and we're and and as if the response you and i would have emma is like you're right <laughs> american genocide and uh, native american genocide was kind of like legit and uh i support it no yeah right just, no i don't right and 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 the idea that they're not willing to really examine their complete collapse into might me means right arguments <laughs> um well, yeah which is just right wing blood can i just say stuff yeah you've been crushing it on this and i oh, and thank i you. <laughs> truly one of the few voices who's been crushing it so succinctly, so perfectly. And for anyone who has been introduced to this issue through the majority report, they are so lucky to have you because you have been just so clear, especially around, yes, the power dynamics, always reminding us, never sort of like falling for the little sand traps that are set up around this issue. And it's been, if you're Thank not told you. enough, I'm telling you now. No, you make me cry. It's It's been... It's it, the, this has changed my brain chemistry indelibly, and like the fact yeah. that I can reach one, we can reach one person, right? Maybe yeah. change their mind. Um, and and I've I've always yeah. So I really appreciate that because um, yeah, sometimes it feels like nothing's changing. <laughs> uh, no, exactly, and and you do it in a way that 
Look, I think a lot of us are scrolling through some of the worst things we've ever seen in our lives. I am a mom. I've seen way too many dead babies, and it is truly yeah. horrendous. And then you see schools, like uh, you know, universities being blown up. You know, you see entire blocks being leveled. And to be able to, without showing your audience all of those images, but still have that, I think, urgency that we all need to have around this, knowing that all of this is going on every single day, is a uh, is really. Look, dude, guys, I made Emma cry, and if I, I could just get some, if I could just get some. Oh my god, guys, it's really not an easy feat. I, I cry at that Amazon <laughs> commercial where they all, the old women start sledding down, and in my life by the Beatles starts playing. Yeah, uh, so don't, but but so don't pat yourself too hard on the back. But um, damn it, but I haven't seen that. One. <laughs> that that I will say that is maybe the most emotionally manipulative co uh, commercial I've ever seen. Yeah, I watched that. And I was like, I watched that. And I was so moved by it, and then it was Amazon. I was like, Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I was like, no. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's the, the, it's those, the Barbie movie when like you know uh billy eilish starts to sing and you're like why yeah. am i crying in a <laughs> yeah, I movie? it's like a chevy ad in, yeah. <laughs> in the movie. oh god that car was so over the top and it's like uh, in the way that it was being advertised that sh that bright blue chevy in that movie anyway thank you francesca and you've been amazing too um it's it's just been oddly a, a, a great moment of solidarity i think for many people who uh on the left may have even had some disagreements uh before like uh, you're seeing a lot of most people in this space i think cover this adequately uh, some not but it's, it's interesting it's a very interesting i think there has been a great sort of coming together of a lot of even leftist commentators who i think have terrible takes around literally everything every single thing other thing yeah but but i'm waiting like, I don't know if you're waiting, but I'm waiting for, like, someone in the Democratic administration, like, obviously a million uh, people in, in Biden's administration have spoken out about this, including the State Department. But I'm waiting for, like, some, you know, um, dumb, dumb leftist to start to, like, change their tune about Palestine because it's actually just more profitable and will get them more clicks to say things that are terrible. Yeah. Um, I don't we'll know see. who it will be yet. Well, TBD maybe... Text me later about who uh, we'll, we'll set some betting lines on who it's going to be. Um, you mentioned that uh, university. Uh, can can you get the footage of the demolition too? I think we'll play after this. Um, so, uh, Francesca, just wanted to get your reaction to this. This was uh, yesterday, a State Department press briefing with Matt Miller and Matt Lee of the Associated Press, who is consistently a welcome adversarial excellent journalist in these state department briefings and asks yeah. poignant important questions this is yet another example of his excellent journalism here pressing matt miller on the video that the israeli military uh sent out bragging about it showing what appears to be a controlled demolition of a palestinian university now if this had happened to Harvard Square, if this happened to Stanford, if this happened to Cambridge, uh, it, it, it would be a, I, I can't even imagine what the reaction would be, right? I mean, this, this is, they would be an act of war and we would go absolutely berserk, worst terrorist attack in the history of our Yeah, suddenly our the country. right would defend higher ed. Right. They'd be like, oh, those w wonderful professors who we've yes. been doxing. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but because it's a university in Gaza and it's not a Western white superpower, eh, it doesn't really count as an educational institution, right? The racism underlying all of this is just so, so profound. But that is the context here for Matt Lee questioning uh miller and the last one based on uh, saeed's question about the the uh demolition of the the university i don't know if you've seen the video it's pretty widely available but it certainly looks i mean it looks like a controlled demolition it looks like what we do here in this country when we're taking down an old hotel or a stadium um yeah, and you have nothing to say? You I, have nothing to say about this? I, I mean, it, to do that kind of an explosion, you need to be in there 
you have to put the explosives down and it takes a lot of planning and preparation to do. And if there was a threat from this particular facility, they wouldn't have been able to do it. So I have seen the video. Uh, I can tell you that it is something we uh, are raising with the governor of Israel, as we do often do uh, when we well, see raising as when, when, like, when we see to to ask questions and 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 find out what the underlying situation is, as we often do when we see reports of this nature. Um, but I'm not able to characterize the actual facts on the ground before hearing that that response. Yeah, but you saw the video. I did see the video. I don't. I'll, I don't I mean, know. I don't, like know I don't know. What was, it, it, it looks I don't like, know what was know, under that building. I don't know what was under that building. I don't know what was uh, inside. Well, yeah, but inside it doesn't matter building. what was under the building because they obviously got in there to put the explosives down to, to, to <laughs> so, do it in I, the way that they did. Uh, again, I'm, I, I'm glad you have factual certainty about it. I just, I just don't. I don't. All I, I, I have don't, is what I, I saw I, in the video. I just right? don't. And I think you guys but saw I can it too. Say, uh, we did see it. And I can say that we have raised it with and the government of Israel. And it's not troubling to you? Uh, we are always troubled by the by um, uh, any degradation of civilian infrastructure in Gaza, but without knowing the actual underlying circumstances. I'm a little hesitant, I think, for reasons that should be understandable to pass definitive judgment on it from this podium. Can I ask you just a, just yes, a follow up? Is there no follow-up after that? It goes to another person. Goes to another person, yeah. Uh, I think for reasons that are obvious, I am a massive coward. Look at my face. Yeah. <laughs> I will not go into it any further. I am a paid liar for the State Department. Uh, don't you understand that it's my job to eat shit, and then hopefully <laughs> I'll be able to support another ethnic cleansing in 10 years when I get a promotion. All of the biggest <laughs> uh, Biden administration freaks come from the State Department's press office. That's where Jen Psaki oh. came from. Ned Price was the Animorph uh, pre- Oh, Ned pre, Price. Pre, uh, pre, Animorph. Pre, was the Animorph predecessor of Matt Miller, and then uh, now John- They look exactly the same. And then now John, John Kirby, Kirby as well. They're yeah. so- just the Which smarmiest is propagandists alive. Because then in the actual State Department, there have been multiple dissent cables, but no one's talking about them. Not even the right is talking about them. Yeah. You know, when there when there was maybe almost a dissent cable, I believe, when, when the U.S. withdrew from Afghanistan, the right was obviously freaking out about it. Same with mainstream news, uh, you know, MSNBC or, or CNN or whatnot. But it's like, oh, dissent cables from inside the State Department? No, no. And there have been few resignations. Obviously, shout out to Tarek Habash for his resignation yep. from the Department of Ed. Um, but yeah, man, these goons, they are, they're so sad. And you, look, just what is the strategy to level a university? It's genocide. It's, exactly. you will never return here. You will well, never ever educate yourself here. You never educate your children here. What is the strategy to leveling whole blocks, whole apartment buildings that have been completely evacuated already? It's because, no, we want to build Israeli apartments here. We they're already advertising for it. They're already advertising. I just want to show the video of the demolition. This is, just Im imagine, imagine if this was a historic American or British university, okay? Just imagine. For the podcast audience, there's no audio to this, but you'll see in a second. The, uh, there we go. My God. Oh my God. And it was already, you could see the windows. I mean, hollowed out bombed to oblivion in and of itself but yes as you say like that is an act of ge genocide because it's erasing basically you know records of life there um destroying the opportunity for higher education for 2.4 million people and and declining as israel continues its, its uh, crimes of genocide and a reminder to people um well, it's about destroying hope, right? You, you, you're yes. not going to be able to get out. You either leave your homeland forever or you die. Um, yeah. And all of your cultural touchstones will be eliminated. And yeah. um, what are they afraid of? You, unemployment yeah, level in Gaza like, was like 70%. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like what? who are you actually afraid of? And this is the other thing. I'm sorry. Israelis are cowards. The IDF are nothing but cowards. They are detonating universities and whole blocks of with no people in them. They're not even and and who they are afraid of are babies, are children, are civilians, are women, are men. It's just why and they say it's a war. 
Yo, I mean, you, all you have to look at, like, is, an, again, Native American genocide. What was part of that? It was destroying education. It was re-educating, you know, kids. It was uh, obviously systematically abusing them, uh, depriving them of, I mean, pretty soon we're going to see this kind of, with inside Israel as well, there are Palestinians, obviously, who live inside of Israel. They are already prevented from doing things like speaking Arabic out loud. Uh, they get followed by the cops if they do that. But it, I think we will see the more and more of the cleansing of even any kind of Palestinian life within inside Israel as we go forward, because that that is part of this. Yeah, it's it, it, that's that's exactly right. Um, and the <laughs> the article two of the Genocide Convention, I've now read this on the show um, three days in a row because there is. Right now, a a, uh, a talking point from Israeli spokespeople that to call this a genocide is an insult to the memory of the Holocaust. Um, because in the West, really, since we are not um, adequately ed educating our population, the genocide is for many people synonymous with hol the Holocaust because it happened in Europe. It happened um, on a scale of unprecedented proportions obviously uh, the nazi genocide of jews and other people six million jews killed because it was so industrialized it was mm -hmm. so organized and mm -hmm. also many other european nations were complicit in it for uh, uh other genocides that are of smaller scales typically it's within the borders of that nation and uh they're not able to do it at that pace because of the way that the holocaust was so um, structured in this like incredibly evil, terrifying way. But there are, there have been many genocides: Cambodia, Armenian, the Native American people that you're talking about it's there, Timor. Uh, Rwanda. I mean, we, we could go on and on. That meet these articles. Israel has exceeded these uh, uh, the, the 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 planks here of Article Two of the Genocide Conventions many times over. A, killing members of the group that they're targeting, a national, ethnic, racial, or religious group. B, seriously, or causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. Obviously. A and B, they've already done so. C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. That is, uh, destroying basically the entire North Gaza Strip, 85% of Palestinians displaced, uh, no clean water, no food, no anesthesia, barely now any no functioning hospitals. I believe the last yes. hospital might have actually just gone like become an operable. Yeah, down in Khan Yunis, right? Because they're going into the south too, which now you know, Hamas is everywhere apparently, and that also feeds into imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. 300% increase in miscarriages, yeah. stories of women giving birth on dirty floors without any kind of medical attention because the doctors that are still left and alive are having to treat the patients that are coming in and needing amputations and urgent medical care from the genocide. E is forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. That is the one where you can't necessarily say Israel meets that on its face. I would argue you could make a case that even prior to October 7th, the just locking up of any Palestinian children that they say through rocks without any recourse and holding them indefinitely is the seizure of children from a population. But you don't even need to meet all five. They clearly have met A, B, C, and D. It is a genocide. It's a mm -hmm. genocide. Yeah. No, and, and thank God yeah. for South Africa for saying this. And I think the school's... Look, the death, the babies, it's, it's, it's like, it's unconscionable. There's something extra cruel about going after schools, about seeing IDF soldiers, as I saw a few weeks ago, celebrating just like in a classroom, all chatted up in his military gear, looking real hard, fighting who? Uh, a blackboard with just like writing on it and like a little, you know, things on the wall that you see in elementary schools taking it down, mocking it, mocking the classroom. And the reason it feels more insidious is because, you know, the whole like, hey, 
pull yourself up by the bootstraps, make something of your life. Like mm -hmm. the children are the future and the ways that Israelis are so paternalistic and racistly patronizing to Palestinians about how, well, look, if they wanted to better themselves, they would have done X, Y, and Z and other things that they'll never reach for me to not call them animals. Like, and education is part of that. Right. Yeah. Education and trying to get ahead and trying to, you know, be employable or whatnot. Doing anything is part of that. They don't care. They ultimately don't care. And and to say nothing of how much how much of the infrastructure in Gaza has actually been thanks to the international community that Israel has bombed. What about you like UN funds or US funds? No, they don't yeah. care. Anyway. Yeah. Anywho. All right, gonna um, read some IMs because you're mentioned here. Uh, Ash Ma yeah. Ma Manson says, "Thank you, Emma and Francesca. I'll never, I never miss the majority report or the bituation room. You certainly hey. don't have to change my mind about genocide. It just feels nice not to get gaslit when listening to your coverage. Even people ostensibly quote on our side are playing nuance, bro, about this, and it's sickening. I agree. Yeah, let's talk sadly. about yeah the intrinsic moral character of Houthi militants. You know because they <laughs> referred to." Israel as like Jewish or Jews, the Zionist entity. Yeah, I mean, rather than a state, it's all yeah. in language. G yeah, it, no, but we should copy and paste like what is set acceptable uh, discourse at a dinner party here in the United States onto a completely different cultural context. Uh, as Israel refers to itself as the Jewish state within that region, and so the. Arabs in the region sometimes colloquially refer to them as Jews when talking about Israel and say that it's anti-Semitic in the same exact way that it would mm -hmm. be here in the U.S. I mean, that is also Western arrogance. Our, con our context is understood by everybody. I don't know if, you, if you're, you're aware of this because we're the wealthiest nation on earth and we're the world's superpower. Our cultural context is what everyone needs to subscribe to or we're going to say you're a terrorist. And, and this is not pro Houthis, but I'm just saying, like, essentially, to say that the 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 that the Houthi militants are acting in because of anti-Semitism, and that we can't basically say that their blockade of these ships is righteous in a in a way. I I I, I the action in and of itself is righteous, not the group in and of itself. This right. is kind of basic geopolitics. Yeah, yeah. How do they? But how do they feel about trans rights? <laughs> yeah, right. That's what really matters here. Um, and I think it's incredible. This, you know, this week, Claire Daly uh, in the uh, Irish parliament spoke out and basically said, Biden, don't ever claim Irish heritage. Like, get yeah. our names out your mouth. <laughs> get Ireland's name out your mouth. And it was so brilliant. And I do feel like um, it is important to remember something she said that sort of stuck with me, which was there's no way forward. And Israel knows there's no way forward out of this without them becoming a pariah state and with occupation and apartheid. And she said, quote, on borrowed time. And that is so, so right on. And I hope we make that true, that this is on bar. They know that their time is waning to subjugate Palestinians in the way that they do. And we have to make good on that um, the world over. And the United States is the last to know because people around the world, global south, all throughout Latin America, all throughout Africa, Asia, you saw South Africa take the leadership position. Palestinians are universal emblem of the colonized, the occupied, yep. the resistance fighters, just as they once were against their colonial oppressors. So sorry, buds. Sorry. All right. Well, I, I think am. I think we're oh, spent no. here. Girl, I will see you in San Francisco. Yes, everybody who hasn't yet, get those tickets. It's in the description there. Um, looking forward yes. to seeing you in person, Francesca. It's been way too long. <laughs> maybe if ever, maybe one time in D.C. long ago. Yeah. But yeah, and, and Saturday night, there's still tickets for uh, Corn Pops and Space Lasers, we're calling it, because I couldn't think of anything else for a political comedy show, so apologize. Apologies for that. But yeah, get tickets to that, too, on Saturday. And thanks so much. Oh, yes. I just thought that. The <laughs> thank you. They, yeah, uh, and no. bye. They, thank you, guys. Um, Francesca, check out the Bituation Room. It's <laughs> wonderful. It's essential. Um, please check out uh, Bad Hasbro. Because yeah. I literally, li I really, truly live for, for Matt's, uh, your, your husband's TikToks. He Nazis are getting mad at him now because they don't understand. 
he it's <laughs> like he is, ha, is has some sort of listening device uh uh in like my phone or something i'm sure it's just the same with his his zionist friends and, and relatives like this is the the exact kinds of conversations i'm having that he mocks so so cathartically so really really uh, love what you guys are doing and uh again check out the habituation room and if you're in san francisco i will be there next weekend with francesca all right. See you later. All right. Take care. Thanks, friend.